Hello guys, this is Dr. Lior Barrell, and first off I'd like to say thank you so much. A lot of you guys who wrote to me on a private message tell me how much you liked and enjoyed our mini-series that I've done about uh, computers, how to build one, what parts I recommend, and so on and so forth. I'm glad it helped a lot of people, and a lot of you guys built computers, even sent me pictures of how it looks and everything, and I, it's just really insane and awesome and amazing uh, to see that. And uh, you guys want, did request me to do a mini-series about 3D printing. As you guys know, I built my own 3D printer. I have also 3D printers I bought. Uh, and I use them a lot, especially with prototypes. Obviously, if you're looking for anything serious, you should look into mold casting and so on and so forth. But it is incredible to have prototypes. And also, if you put resin on it and everything, it could be just as well as, uh, as a real uh, professional part. Uh, but like I like I always said, I, I, I am uh, really much into 3D printers and I really love them. And you guys requested uh, that I would do. You guys saw some of my uh, Iron Man helmets and stuff like that up on there. So you guys wanted me to do a uh, mini-series uh, covering uh, helmets. I had to do a helmet from beginning to end, uh, what I use, all, all these things. And... I decided I was kind of like going back and forth how I should go about doing it. Iron Man's a very common one. I have I have that uh, that's coming out also. I'm going to be showing you uh, bits and pieces how to do it. But you guys requested me to do something from from like a helmet from beginning to end. So I wanted to show you guys exactly how the process is, what's the settings I use, all of that good stuff. Okay. So first off, I'm going to tell you what you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need a 3D printer, and of course, filament. Now, I am not endorsing them in any way, as always. I say everything I do, right, which is true, is, is uh, self-funded. But unless you guys in the comments below could tell me something where I can get cheaper filament uh, than this, I will go with that and check it out and do a review on that. But so far, I have used Ziltec filament a lot. I mean, uh, it's cheap. I got them, uh, if you buy them for like, uh, what is it, you get 10 of them, you could get them for like about 110 bucks. So it's really, really cheap compared to buying $20 ones. And unlike the regular cheap of the mill crap uh, that you could compare, uh, if you com compare them to the professional ones, it's really, really crappy. It comes out really bad. A lot of the filament are, uh, you know, they, they, they present errors and stuff like that. They get uh, mangled. They get all kinds of crap. Um, with Ziltec, it's the same exact quality that I buy from the expensive, pro uh, expensive um, uh, versions. And, uh, you know, it's cheap. So I get them for like about uh, $12. Sometimes I have specials that come out for like about uh, 10 I also bought their clear one that I did uh, the Zelda Breath of the Wild uh, sword. I'm still waiting on some LEDs. I'll show you guys once I'm completed with that. But I wanted to do a mini series and I was contemplating what should I do? What should I do? What kind of helmet? So we're going to do the helmet of Star Killer. Star Killer is one of my favorite Sith Lords uh, slash Dark Jedi slash Jedi slash everything. Uh, you'll see him in The Force Unleashed. Uh, he's, he's absolutely one of my favorite characters. I wish they'd do a movie about him. Uh, it'll be better than all the new Star Wars uh, garbage that came out. So, I mean, I'm going to be doing that for you guys, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, the thing that I recommend always, I always like white filament to use. It's a neutral color. It's something good to do, but... Because we're doing a star killer, I am going to say, and it also depends on what you're spray, spray painting and coloring. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using black filament. Now, I have very few of these because most of my filaments are, are white. So I actually saved it, uh, saved my black filaments for things that are special. And I guess this is uh, a special occasion. It's like opening up champagne here, a bottle. So uh, as you see, they're vacuum sealed. I'm going to be opening this up and we're going to be doing it. It's going to take exactly one uh, spool of uh, one kilogram, you know, uh, 1.75 millimeter black filament. That's how, uh, how much it's actually going to uh, take you to fill. Um, to me, normally that's what it takes to do Iron Man. Um... Star Killer, of course, uh, everything. Now you're gonna see it, like when you set it up on on your slicer software, it's gonna tell you like how much uh, do you pay uh, per spool, and you write like twelve dollars, so you know that means one spool. And then when you hit that button, uh, when it does the rendering or whatever, when it, it slices up for you, it's gonna tell you exactly, you know, if it goes over that, if it goes below that. I like to get to leave only just a little bit behind, so I know, give or take, it's uh, that I don't have to stop the print and put in new one and risk. 
Um, obviously, you could continue it. I mean, it always you could always continue it by pausing it, but you have to be there to see that issue. If you're not there, it doesn't automatically stop. Uh, I do want to come out with some kind of thing that hopefully one day will make it easier. Maybe it's out already and I'm not aware of it, but whatever. But the thing is, uh, that, that's why I like to keep it uh, you know, about one spool and under. Now, it also depends on what uh, 3D printer you're using. I'm using uh, CR10-like uh, printer. So basically what I'm saying is it's about 300 millimeter, 300 millimeter like that, and then 400 millimeter in height, okay? And I think all around that, that's good. That's why I recommend using a CR10 or anything that has that kind of build volume or bigger when you're doing helmets. Now, if, if you're doing, uh, if you have a smaller one, uh, you know, don't you fret. Uh, you could get a, what is it, mesh mixer. I, I have a episode, if you look back, it shows you how to cut models in half. I'm actually cutting a model right now, the Ark of the Covenant. I'm making a big one, a huge one. And uh, <clears throat> I'm cutting it up into a lot of giant, uh, you know, 300 millimeter squares. And I wish I had a bigger a bigger printer, which I plan on building one time, as a, uh, one day, a six footer. Uh, but, you know, I obviously need room for it, which I don't have right now. And uh, maybe I'll do a mini series on how to build it from uh, from scratch and you guys could see. But um, right now, this is what we're going to cover. We're going to do this. Uh, and uh, that's it. I mean, so just slice it up and then attach them with, uh, was it, Gorilla Glue. And then, you know, use Bondo uh, to cover up the seams and all of that and just, you know, s scratch it off. But we're going to do it in one shot. I like doing it. It's going to take about four to seven days. It depends on what. So we're going to go right into the slicer software in the next episode. And I'm going to show you exactly what's what. In fact, I'm going to show you right now in the slicer exactly how I set it up uh, because it looks like we have time. So give me one second. We'll go right into that. Okay, guys, so we're going into the slicer right now, into the program right here. Into I'm using Simplify 3D. You could use Cura. It's pretty much the same crap anyways, but uh, I, I just get better success with this, uh, although my friends get better success with Cura, so it doesn't really matter what you're using. But these are my settings, pretty much exactly the settings that I had for you guys in uh, my other episode. You could check out the settings I recommend for Simplify 3D. I've been getting great things. Uh, now, for big helmets, you want to use support. And I'm going to say you want to use a raft. I know some people are against the raft or whatever. And, you know, because it's a waste of plastic or whatever. It just I want to make sure that I get the perfect print possible. I'm investing a lot of time and money in this. So to put in a little bit extra plastic just to, uh, to ensure me, just to be safe, I'd rather just do that. Now, the only change I made is if you could see the support, I put it at 20%. And over here, I put it instead of a 70 at 50 uh, percent. It does make a difference. The reason I'm doing that is to save a little bit on plastic, uh, not really on time. Because, again, I want to get it. Uh, I want to make sure that it's it's going to be done in one uh, big uh, spool. You understand? So and, and you want to get it below the ten dollar mark, below the one kilogram Um you know, whatever it is here, uh, yeah, b below the one kilogram, because you want to make sure, just in case, if there's a little extra ooze or whatever, uh, that you, you know, in the beginning when you want to pour a little bit out and all of that, it might go over and you're not going to complete your print. You don't want to deal with that. You want to keep it under a certain amount. So, what I did is I also here uh, increased um, and decreased some things here. Just so for the height. But again, it depends on whatever you guys want to do with your helmet. And uh, no matter what helmet you choose, that's always a good way to save on some plastic. But I'm going to show you now. I am uh, doing the slicing right now so you guys could see. And then I'm going to show you once it's complete uh, what I got the time down to and what is the one I recommend. Now, I'm going to tell you that this is a little bit uh, walking on the edge what I'm doing here. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about in about two seconds. Uh, it says parsing G code file, whatever. Finishing parsing G code file. And now here we go. Okay, so if you can look, it's 70 hours, 49 minutes. Now I'm going to tell you it's going to be longer than that. Uh, they just, uh, I would say, call this an estimate time. They're never accurate. Uh, and as you can see, the material cost at 9.62, which is, I, I put it at $10 per spool just to gauge it and the film, uh, the filament length obviously is below the one kilogram mark, uh, the plastic weight, uh, sorry, b below the one kilogram uh, mark. So um, I am I am comfortable with this, although I rather keep it at nine. Uh, if you can make it at material cost $9 or whatever, or, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, plastic weight at 900, uh, 0.15 even or whatever, you would be uh, doing yourself a big solid. Me, I'm working on the edge a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic I'm going to get good results because I have done this before with the uh, Iron Man mask. And all of that. And as you can see, everything is going great. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. You're going to say, well, why don't you do it in, in jobs or whatever? So you like, let's say up to here, go at 30 and then go over here to 20 or, you know, whatever. Uh, but as you can see, I set it to 20. Now, I don't recommend you guys on a helmet that you set it at 30. I don't really notice any difference between 20 to 30. Other than it wastes a little bit more plastic. I mean, I could try to go here and you're going to see there is going to be a big difference. But uh, in terms of uh, uh, how durable it is, I really got the same amount from both of them. I mean, I am going to be putting resin on, the, you know, in uh, fiberglass in the inside uh, the unit here, inside uh, what I'm going to be printing, uh, regardless of it being 30 or 20. So it's going to be the same kind of ruggedness that I'm going to get on 20. So it's not that... Uh, it's not that bad. I don't recommend you guys go to 30 on it because you are going to go over and then you're going to just have to slice it. I don't want to have any seams. I don't want to do any type of work uh, with uh, Bondo or whatever. I want to just go right into this. And as you can see, it makes a big difference. It jumps up to nine uh, to 1060. Now, I could try to go into, you know, play a little bit uh, around with it and go to 25. But I'm telling you, you're not going to really notice any difference between 20 to 30 on a helmet. I can guarantee you that. I mean, especially here on this side here, there's nothing. It's very, very light. And uh, on Iron Man as well, it's extremely light. Only once you go into the deeper uh, meshes, that's when it starts getting a little complicated. But you're not, you don't have to worry about that. It's going to be rugged either way between 20 to 30. But I'm just going to be uh, showing you on 25. Let's just see how long this takes. <clears throat> so it says initializing preview data. Let's just see what uh, we could come out with. Parsing G code file here. Let's just see what we could come out with. Uh, if we could get something doable, I would say just let's do it. But um, to be honest, I think it's just a waste. See, it's $10.12, and, and which is already going over the one kilogram mark. I don't recommend it. Go to 20. Trust me, you guys are going to be extremely happy. Anyway, so we're going to leave it out here because now we're going to be just having to save it. In the next episode, we're going to just print it out. I'm going to show you it in the process of printing uh, and all of that uh, uh, goodness. Um, so we'll just go right into that uh, in the next episode. And uh, that's it pretty much. Okay, so have a good one, y'all. Take care. Bye. So as always, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please do help the channel out by subscribing, liking this video, and hitting that bell button as many more videos to come. Also, don't forget to enter the sweepstakes. I'm doing a giveaway uh, for this baby right here. Uh, as you can see, it holds the Nintendo Switch. <clears throat> it holds the Nintendo Switch and... Um, uh, also, you could put your phone on it and whatever. So I, I painted it and everything. I took it actually from a uh, Thingiverse model. Uh, and what happened was uh, I printed it out, did some modifications uh, to it because uh, it wasn't coming out just right the way I wanted. But it uh, came out uh, really, really awesome and uh, definitely going to be giving that baby away. Uh, the only way you guys can enter is basically subscribing to the channel, uh, liking, hitting the bell button, and uh, because I want you guys to get uh, alerted of it. But uh, I want you guys to comment down below uh, anything, really. Uh, do you enjoy this? Uh, wh what are you looking forward? Do you want me to build anything? Uh, and basically, like I said, I'm self-funded here. That's the only way you guys can help me out. But also, at the same time, I want to make sure that I provide not just honest reviews and you know unboxing and, uh, unboxings and stuff like that, but in these kind of mini -series, Series, I like to also open it up to building things. So if you guys want anything for me to make, based on the magnitude, how many requests I get uh, on that topic, I will uh, make a video or a mini series uh, for that. So let's say you wanted me to make another helmet or another something else, you know, whatever. Uh, let me know what you want. I'll print it out, do it from beginning to end in a mini series if there's enough requests for that. Uh, be sure to show up also next, uh, the, the next one after this mini series is going to be the other one you guys requested a lot, is how to build a gaming slash post-production slash uh, productivity desk on the cheap. 
uh, instead of paying eight nine hundred dollars to fifteen hundred bucks you're gonna pay a little over three hundred or if you want it like mine with the drawers a little over four hundred dollars and it's gonna be phenomenal uh, so uh, definitely tune into that I'm gonna do another giveaway with a sub-zero uh, not sub-zero uh, noob cybot mat uh, you know mask and all and sub uh, and scorpion uh, mask and we'll, we'll keep doing giveaways and uh, sweepstakes here uh, just uh, keep those requests coming and based on that I'll see uh, what you know enough uh, requests for it and I will make that mini series uh, about it but anyways uh, like as always uh, if you like what you see hit that like button subscribe and hit that bell button as it'll alert you of everything next that's coming out of any video that's coming out of there uh, these kind of mini series, uh, as you can see, I, I mostly mostly specialize in 3D printing and as well as uh, uh, you know the Nintendo Switch and you know video game reviews and technology reviews. But usually 3D prints uh, or anything of the mini series, like I will be coming out with every Saturday night or Sunday. So uh, definitely tune into that. Just wanted to say that. Uh, thanks for everybody that enjoyed uh, the other mini series, uh, and definitely keep those requests coming. Have a good one, y'all. Take care. Bye.